let's get to our guest who has been wasting patiently on the line, um, Master Chrism, and he is based out of California. Uh, and I, I don't know, I, what would you, okay, I'm gonna just going to bring you on. What would you describe yourself as a, a teacher, a healer? How, how, would you, how would you put yourself in your own words? Well, uh, thank you for having me on your show, Duncan, and I'd like to thank everyone at the Healing Loft and Eileen uh, for arranging this interview. Uh, it, regarding your question, uh, I'm a, I, I teach the Kundalini. The, the Kundalini teaches, you know, through uh, an individual that has it, and I, I have the awakened Kundalini, and, and uh, for any and all individuals, the Kundalini is is a manifestation of a higher spiritual and energetic quality that we all carry with us. And so, uh, I would describe myself as a human being that has activated the the internal aspect of the divine within themselves and is allowing that divine and surrendering to the information that the divine brings through him. Kind of wordy, one of the, you know that's that's no that's okay and, and a lot of our and and we're and um, Master Chrism and I were talking a little bit off air before on the show. Um, there are people that we you know we have different types of listeners. Some are very familiar with Kundalini energy, and some may not be familiar at all. Uh, if you were just going to walk down, you know, just someone on the street, um, how would you describe uh, what Kundalini energy is? I would let them know that there is a there is an energetic quality that resides within the last three vertebrae of the tailbone that extends to the perineum and down both legs to the bottoms of the feet, and that this is an energetic potential that really guides the evolutionary quality of a person's life. How you evolve in your lifetime will be guided by this this energetic force, this spiritual force. I would uh, let the person know that this is a consciousness within a consciousness. This is the divine consciousness within the the five body aspected consciousness that you have. Five body aspected relates to the the spirit body, the mental body, the physical body, the emotional body, and the psychological body. Uh, those five senses that we use to navigate our way through physical world uh, are represented as bodies. Different bodies. Let them know that. Okay. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, okay, so we have five different bodies, and and this um, energy resonates through all of them in a different way. Is that? Am I, am I hearing that correctly? Well, well, it, it resonates through all of them, but the qualities of the five bodies is what differentiates it. So, for instance, okay. the uh, the uh, physical body won't have the same resonance with Kundalini as the emotional body will. The emotional body will typically come out uh, through a series of, of emotional responses, whereas the physical body will respond within a series of physical manifestations, such as automatic movements that, that uh, the Sanskriti people called Kriyas. Uh, Kriyas, you know, oh, things yes. Things of that nature. And and that that's an interesting... Um, I, I've heard the term Kriyas. What, what exactly are Kriyas? Kriya is an automatic movement of the physical body, but it also... You know, you can also have emotional kriyas, mental kriyas, things of that nature, but we'll just stick with the physical for the moment. Sure, yeah. Uh, as, as the kundalini infuses the physical system, the physical system will be torqued or twisted or, or moved in, in gentle and sometimes abrupt ways automatically. So, for instance, if you have a kundalini activation, you may wake up in the middle of the night finding yourself in a yoga position that you have never, that you're not familiar with, and you've never taken a yoga class. Interesting. You don't know anything about yoga, and here you are in in this yoga position, you know, with your spouse sleeping next to you, looking at you like, what's going on, huh? <laughs> so the Kundalini, that would be a kriya. That would be what a kriya is. And okay, uh, it's 
Okay, these, so it's these kriyas that... come in many different ways. They can be a shake that would resemble a palsy. It can right. be a, a yoga position. It can be something that doesn't even come close to a yoga position. It can be something of a of a supplication, as if a person were supplicating themselves to whatever. And uh, these are all natural movements that are that the that the body will go through. Uh, at the uh, instigation of the Kundalini, and in the way I, I, I described, um, I, I kind of did a little bit uh, when I was um, promoting the show, and I and, and hopefully I was accurate. I said that so people understand, Kundalini is an energy that lays latent in most people uh, until it's activated, uh, and and it's a divine energy that gets. Activate, and that's and we we keep bringing up we're going back to activation, and that's definitely what what this is about. You know what you're you, you activate the kundalini, but would that be an accurate uh, statement? That uh, well, it's, it's it's a it's a latent energy in all people, not just all people. Yet, no, I'm in everybody sorry. that I, has I, a spine. If you have a spine and you're a human being, then you have latent kundalini in the last three vertebrae of the tailbone. Yeah, no, what I was saying was that. For most people, it's late, and they may not be aware of like how to activate it, or uh, and I, or even not even knowing how, or having an experience that would, you know, you know, and we'll talk a little bit about the natural where people activate it, not knowing that they're activating it, and then they they wonder what's what's happening to them. Right. Well, not all people call it Kundalini either. You know, every culture on this world has its name for the energy that we are at this time referring to as Kundalini, uh, the greater Khan and Li for the, the ancient Chinese, the uh, Shekinah of the, of the Judaic people, uh, the red serpent energy of the shamans in the Amazon basin. Uh, uh, the Tibetans have their name for it, an uh, aspect of it called Tumo. Uh, you know, the names just go on and on and on, and they and they resonate from the... The, the Bush people of Africa to the Native Americans of the United States and, and other areas. The Siberian, uh, uh, you know, peoples also have their name for it. Uh, so, so everybody has knowledge of, of this quality that, of the divine that we have within ourselves, but they call it, you know, a different name. Here we're calling it Kundalini simply because the the Sanskriti people of ancient India kept such a, a precise and detailed uh, uh, flow of knowledge about it, even up to the present day. You know, and the word Kriya comes from uh, the Sanskrit language as well as does the word Kundalini. It also comes from the Sanskrit language. We don't in the West uh, have um, much of a name that has been made public uh, right. The Western alchemical masters, they, they knew about it. And uh, the Masons, you know, have their their, 30, their 33 degrees, which which basically resonates with the 33 uh, vertebra in the human spine. But when you go beyond that, well, boom, there you have the Kundalini, but, you know, which is the all-seeing eye over the pyramid on the $1 bill. But, you know, that is the eye also known as the eye of Ra, which is also, you know, would be considered the... Uh, the marriage of the kundalini at the, at the top of the head. And so we do have it represented here in the West. It's just kept secret from us here. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you kind of draw, drew the analogy um, with the, uh, yeah, that's interesting, with the 33 vertebrae and the 33rd degree of the Masons. Um, so this is like, this is no secret among them about activating kundalini energy. Uh, well, it's secret, uh, it's secret to the Masons that haven't reached the 33rd degree. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Well, I, I mean, well, you, you know what I meant. Like the people that have reached, yeah, yeah, yeah. and beyond. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, now, uh, now activating the Kundalini, uh, and, and here's uh, some of the things. Um, now, when you're working with people and getting the – one of the words that I kept hearing was um, – you uh, encourage the use of safeties. Uh, what, what's that all about? Uh, safety protocols. When a yep. person has the kundalini come to them and it doesn't fit into their reality or to the world that they're living in, uh, it, it, can, it can be a very destructive force. Uh, if you 
done any research into the Kundalini, you'll, you'll have heard of a term called Kundalini syndrome. And basically what that, uh, what that refers to is a person's response to the Kundalini amplification from a fear-based behavior. Uh, Kundalini, okay. when, it comes, when it comes to a person, is extremely amplifying of all five bodies of expression. Remember the five bodies that we discussed earlier? Exactly. Every aspect of those five bodies will be expressed in a, in a, in a very amplified fashion simultaneously. This, is, this can be a very big deal. This 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 is a reality breaker. It, uh, your reality begins to fragment in many different ways as as the uh, eyelids are removed from your inner eye, as the ancients uh, referred to it. And so the first response is typically going to be that of fear. It's it's going to scare the person to pieces. And uh, the first place they're going to go when they when when their body starts assuming odd positions or their heart rate increases, you know, exponentially or decreases exponentially. They'll go to the ER and the uh, the MDs at the ER will go, oh, my God, we've got to put you through some tests here. And they'll put you through all these tests and and they'll come out and they'll say, well, uh, Mr. Christom, everything is normal. Maybe you're just having an anxiety attack. Here, take these. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, right. Right. or you're a self-admit to a psych ward where they'll do an intake on you, and you'll say, "Oh, geez, you know, I'm hearing angelic music, and I'm smelling incense, and it's not there's no incense around me, and I, you know, I I feel such love for everyone." They'll go, "Oh boy, yeah, we better get you on some high high uh, psychotropic meds here." <laughs> so those are two different uh, modern day medical uh, responses to a Kundalini awakening that is that has not been planned on, that, that a person hasn't, you know, tried to do, or at least if they have tried to do it, they didn't know the ramification of what would occur if they tried to do it. This is called Kundalini right. Syndrome. And basically the, the DX for Kundalini Syndrome is uh, bipolarism with a positive for schizophrenia or vice versa, schizophrenia with a positive for bipolarism. And, uh, in, and they typically give a, a chemical... Uh, treatment for that type of a scenario. Why I introduce safeties, I introduce safeties because, first of all, I want people to know what it is that's happening to them. And I, I incorporate a lot of the ancient, ancient techniques, such as banda locks. Uh, you can look that up. I believe it's spelled B-A-N-D-H-A-S. That refers okay. to a lock in the Sanskriti language. Uh, one of those locks is the uh, Gyan Mudra, Gyan, G-Y-A-N, with in, mm-hmm. that involves the four fingertip and the thumb tip to come together on both hands with the remaining fingers spread apart. You know, that will help channel the energy in an effective way within the body. The tongue tip to the upper front teeth, actually right behind the upper front teeth, you have a fleshy mound there, and the tongue tip mm-hmm. goes there. And it'll Sometimes it'll just go there automatically. And that can really help a person. And so what, what the safeties are about are ways of the person surrendering to the, the infusion of the, of the kundalini as a, as a, in a harmonious fashion, uh, not in any way that is blocking it or trying to control it with the ego, but in a way that, that the kundalini will naturally uh, uh, you know, suggest to the person through its own movements. Just like I described the kriya, the Kriya is a natural suggestion that the Kundalini is giving to the person's physical body to come in harmony with the flow. Mm-hmm. And when we're asleep, uh, it's typically our ego that is asleep. And so the Kundalini will come during the dream state and the sleep time because it knows that our ego is kind of off doing something else and it can go ahead and do the work that it's there to do. Kundalini syndrome is extremely dangerous for people to have uh, uh, it can, it well, can, it can yeah. ruin it, it it can ruin your life it can absolutely ruin well, your life well of course well especially if you're not used to what or there are sometimes natural trigger points that where people don't even know how they got themselves in that position where they've activated it and that i i would imagine and some of the things that you were just describing earlier yeah would be really scary I mean, oh, it's, well, when it, 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 it fragments to reality almost completely, and it must. 
it must do that in order to to rebuild the person's ideology and, and informational structure from a much broader frequency of, of understanding. And, you know, say before they they were basically operating from the five senses and, and you know doing okay with that. Well, now now you have say you know a thousand and five senses, and, and you you kind of have to expand the the five body reality that far in order to to you know understand how the kundalini is communicating to you yeah, to put it in 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 uh, a more familiar framework uh, are you familiar with the arthurian legends of the holy uh, grail oh yeah yeah yep yeah, 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 a little bit you know a little kundalini knowledge. kundalini turns a person into a walking talking holy grail as a matter of fact, the Holy Grail is referring to Kundalini. You are the divine cup, and Kundalini is the divine wine being poured into that cup. Uh, but if you don't know that, you know you're going to respond in very, uh, you know, many different ways that could be very destructive for you. And, and uh, so I initiated these safeties uh, to begin a process of a person harmonizing themselves with the agenda of transformation that the kundalini will bring. Um, well, and I had a good question and it was uh, brought to my attention, and then you might have even kind of answered it. Um, does one need a teacher to progress with kundalini and, and, and activate this? It's helpful. It, it, they're just hard to find. Uh, you know, an authentic person with, with kundalini is not the most common teacher that, that you'll find out there these days, but it is helpful. I uh, I would have loved to have had one. <laughs> you 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 go you go through a series of trainings and a series of testing that you don't even know you're being trained or tested for. And if you have a teacher there that says, "Hey, hey, relax now. This is a test. This is what you're studying. This is how it's going. You know, these are the parameters. You know, keep your tongue up." Keep your eyes up. Keep your fingers locked. Drink plenty of water and go to it. Let me know how it goes. That alone, that kind of reassurance alone can save a life. Oh, absolutely. And it means the station gone wrong. Be assured that you're not having... Well, yeah, it, it, well, it is. I mean, literally, you're helping people, like, you're not having a seizure. You're not going crazy. You're okay. having... A, a profound spiritual experience. That's what the uh, the the AMA now has refers to Kundalini awakenings typically as a as a spiritual emergency, which it is, and I, I agree with that definition. But it's far more and then, than spiritual. Oh yeah, no, it was well, it's hitting. Well, everything you know. One of my beliefs, and many people's beliefs, is that everything's connected. Your emotional, your physical, your spiritual. They're all tied together. They they aren't independent from each other. So it's going to rock your world. Um, and, yeah, as you were saying earlier, like the five bodies, you know, um, when you're getting, you're activating something, you know, deep inside you. Um, and, and, you know, one of the curious things is, like, what is life like after you've had this activation experience, after this spiritual emergency? Well, okay, so... The, the typical scenario is is when when the the energy comes up and it will basically in a spinal sweep scenario it will the energy sweeps up from the tailbone and mm -hmm. activates every chakra all the way up to the top of the crown chakra uh it protrudes itself through uh the the uh the brow of points all also referred to as the third eye. Uh, almost as a serpent comes up, and this is what you'll see in the in the uh, the Egyptian pharaohs with the snake coming out of the third eye region. That is the uraeus, U R E A S, I believe. You, yeah, I believe. You know, play around with the spelling on it, but it's there, and that is what the kundalini does. It, it'll it'll extend itself through the third eye after it has activated the crown, and. Uh, as that is occurring, you'll feel, or a person will often feel like a freight train is moving up their spine. Seriously, literally, I thought I thought it was an earthquake. Being I out bet. here in California, you know, I was going, oh, geez, that's a big one. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> my body was thrashing all over the place. And uh, and I literally thought it was an earthquake until the thrashing subsided, and I looked for the lamps to be swinging, and nothing was swinging. It was kind of, hmm. uh-oh. <laughs> and then, you know, you have this, right. this golden glow behind your eyes. You can all, Even when you close your eyes in a dark room, you, there's this golden glow that, that is... You're just lit up from the inside out. And that is what is referred to as enlightenment. When the pineal gland is lit up by the kundalini from the inside out, that, those are the beginning stages of enlightenment on a human being. And if you're in a soft, softly lit room and, and you're looking at a person that has kundalini, you'll see a film of light coming through their eyes. It's just a very very light film of light. And uh, after that, after that spinal sweep occurs for the individual, for the person that's just become an initiate of Kundalini awakening, not activation, but awakening, Mm -hmm. everything everything before the spinal sweep was part of an activation sequence. Everything after the spinal sweep is part of an awakening sequence. After the spinal sweep, typically, typically the Kundalini will not go away. I won't make I will make any kind of uh, absolutist statements because the divine has a way of working its will on the human being regardless of the parameters that the humans will set up for themselves. So I won't say absolutely not, but typically the kundalini does not have an off switch after that point. So it just you, continues for the rest of the life of the person. And so when someone is considering activating their kundalini, they have to understand that it's just not going to be the same. You can't go back to the old. It's just you have to embrace you, you, it. You can't, you can't put the genie back into the bottle. Right. And I think that's important for folks to know. But but the reason you... You don't want to. Activate, you don't want to. Well, and we were talking a little, again, you know, one of the things that we promote on this show is, is, is holistic you know, well-being. You know, the whole end, holistic means the whole picture, you know, physical and the emotional, well, let's, spiritual. Well, why, why don't we go into that? Because I, I know okay, that, yeah, that I is more it. the focus of the healing loft. Yeah. And let's go in, let's, let's, let's go in directly to, to uh, the, the healing aspects of the Kundalini. Absolutely. Which are, which are it is just, it is just, it's merely one hair on a full head of hair. Uh, of, a, of a human, the healing aspect is just that much. The rest of it has to deal with other aspects, such as enlightenment and ascension and things of that nature. But the healing aspect is is in, in this way. I do have to speak with an absolute clarity. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that the human condition can bring upon itself with regard to disease or damage mm-hmm. that the kundalini cannot cure. And I mean cure in the medical sense. I mean cure in the way that when you leave a hospital and, you know, they've given you a few search sutures and you have to sign mm-hmm. a form that says, healed and released. <laughs> yeah. Whether it, be, whether it be true or not, the kundalini is cured. I mean, you are cured of the scenario. Really? If that, is, if that potential and, is, and if that is part of your karmic well-being and, and I know everybody's going to say, oh, God, he said the word karma. Well, karma karma plays a huge role into this. Whether you even have a kundalini expression in this lifetime is going to be determined by your karma. But with regard to the, to the eradication, or, or actually I shouldn't use that term, to the balancing of dis-ease within a human system, mm-hmm. there, are, there are no parameters for kundalini. It, it'll go straight to it. And it won't kill a disease. Let's say you have something like a, oh, AIDS. Let's use AIDS, for example. Okay. The Kundalini won't kill the AIDS virus. Absolutely not. One of the, one of the, the foundations of Kundalini is, is the, the uh, Sanskrit term of ahimsa, okay, A-H-I-M-S-A, and you can Google that. Yeah. Do no harm to anything. Do no harm to others. Okay. Right. So the Kundalini won't kill AIDS. It won't eradicate AIDS. It'll mm-hmm. simply change it into something that's not harmful to you. It's all about transformation. It's all about change. Okay. So that virus, 
doesn't do what it's doing to you anymore. It does something else. Maybe something beneficial. Right. Well, you know, I it's it yeah, we we hate AIDS only because of the case of what it does to people and the devastation. We don't understand the community of of uh of illness that AIDS is a part of, just like we don't understand the, the, the micro-communities of the fungus and fungi around us or the, uh, the bacteriological communities of consciousness around us. I mean, we're very, very, we, we, we wear very large blinders when it comes to other intelligence around us and, and the, the, uh, the macrocosm of intelligence and community around us. The, the shamans, walk further in that world than the Western people. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, in, in, in what you're saying makes sense. And that's a big um, incentive for people that want to learn more about Kundalini and Kundalini um, activation. Well, here's the thing, though. Before, before a person should even consider it, they need to right. understand how broad-based the transformation is. Yeah. It can change. It can change your eye color. Okay. For for many you know for for many people that they have a you know any kind of a disease say myasthenia gravis or or a cancer or they've been broadsided by a Mack truck in their Toyota Tercel mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm speaking of real people here when I use these examples right. uh, the Kundalini can basically put the person back together without surgical uh, remediation. Okay. That's, that's the Kundalini thing. can move the cranial plates on top of your head. I, I call it cranial plate migration, in 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 a way that allows the energy to be to be modulated better through the human system. It can do anything it wants with the human being. It is of a divine nature. Divinity does not have human-based, uh, scientific and, and and physics-based parameters of interaction. It can do what it wants, and it does. <laughs> It does. It will. It will work its will upon you, and it's a will that is based in grace, based in love, based in joy, based in bliss, based in self-validation and validation of other people, validation of other life on the planet, validation of 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 a of a consciousness that wraps around everything and everyone. And you get this when you have that final sweep happen, and it hits the top of your head. You become at one with. Everything, everyone. Hmm. You are at one with every leaf of, uh, on a tree in all trees, every grass blade, all grass blades, every dust particle. You're oh. at one with all creation, and that stays with you. That changes you. Well, and that's, and that's what um, many of us are looking for, you know, for that uniting, you know, feeling. Well, it sounds like it's like a profound connection with your your higher self, your soul. You really literally um connect and can get past some of the some of the barriers we put in as human beings. Is well, that, that kind of a that, good that description? Depends. Once again, once again we have to bring the, the, the karma word back into this mix. Uh, if a person can hear the word kundalini, that says a lot right there. For people who are even listening to this broadcast, they you know, if they even just kind of had a curiosity about this kundalini word, that says a lot. Kundalini shouldn't come to all people. There's a level of refinement, of karmic balancing that has to occur before a person can even contemplate having kundalini. I get a lot. Oh, of, I, 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 a I would lot agree. Of, I would agree. Um, yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah. I said, you don't want you don't uh, want a, a serial said, cur- killer to have kundalini. No, I mean, that's why I said that's why I said the key word. Some of us, you know, there. I mean, I would say obviously people that are listening to this I did, program. I did notice that. I noticed yeah. that. Something. I said I'm. I'm and, and well I, stated. I should have been a lawyer. I should be a lawyer. I always care for no, no, that was, words. I, that was well stated. Not everyone <laughs> should have this because because no. they haven't reached that level of refinement. And well, well you know, a lot that of really wouldn't even want that. Yeah, they really you know, comes to I, a crux when when you have a spouse. And one activates, and the other one does not. Okay, that can that can really cause a a, a rift in a marriage. 
And what I'm going to suggest to those who are listening, or, or you know, in the in the, and and especially if these shows are archived, for those of you who they are, are listening archived. in the future, to those of you listening in the future, welcome and hello, and I recognize your presence here. If you are having if you are having uh, if you are a spouse that is having Kundalini and you're afraid to tell the other spouse that you're having this, just just communicate that to your Kundalini. And the kundalini itself will begin the refinement process necessary for that other spouse to come into harmony with it. Do not feel that that it needs to to reach any kind of a of a emotional crisis level. It doesn't. And, that and goes I just want to for anybody. And I just want to just put this out quick, just quickly. Um, if people want to call in uh, with their own questions, um, you are welcome. This is an open show. Uh, and the number I'm going to put that out is 347-838-8539. That's 347-838-8539. And uh, Master Grism will answer uh, some of the questions you might be having. Um, I had one question that just struck me. You know, you know, you've been doing this work for some time. How did you come about, and you've been, well, okay, you're doing this work and you're helping people with their activation, how did you end up having your activation? Did you did you have a teacher yourself, or did it happen naturally? I'm very curious about that. A lot of people, a lot of people are very curious about that. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't have a teacher, and uh, my activation. Uh, well, it gets a little complex, but I guess we can visit it here. Yeah, well, you, I was, you know, high I was, level. Well, here's here's the thing: is the Kundalini follows you into death. You know, you, you hear people saying, you know, old timers sitting outside the gas gas station say, Oh, you can't take it with you. Well Kundalini gets to go with you after you die. It right. comes with you. And it becomes a signature of spiritual evolution in in your in, in the lifetimes that you have to live. Now there's some myths about Kundalini, you know, stating that, well, if you have Kundalini then you all your karma has been burned. Well that's just not true. Okay. Uh, a, a significant portion of your karma has come into balance for this life, mm-hmm. but you probably still have a lot more karma to pay for, you know, from the other existences that you've had. But, and the Kundalini is fine with that. It will help you to balance that in the next incarnation. However, when you come into that next incarnation as a child, you will mm-hmm. have the gifts and the skills of the Kundalini-awakened individual you were right before that incarnation. Do you understand? Are you following me? I am following that, yes. And well, so that it gets down to the full level. I mean, very, yeah. It, it changes it just that childhood body. experience. That, child is levitating. Ch- child is having OBEs. Child is uh, encountering entities and talking with discarnates. Child, child can do things that the parents just kind of look at the kid doing them and they're just saying, don't tell anyone, honey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bet. I bet. Hey, well, and and when I said, well, there's a lot of people that are, you know, they walk into this world um, in, the, in this, their current lifetime, and they're very gifted from a very and young age. The thing age. Is, 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 is pretty much across the board, even the Kundalini awakened people that come into this world, they have to agree to step behind the veil of forgetfulness. And so that kundalini child doesn't realize why it is able to do these things. Well, that's what happened to me. So all throughout my early childhood, I, you know, I had very, very gifted psychic scenarios. Uh, all of the scenarios that I, that I discussed just, 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 you know, just now and more that I won't discuss uh, came to me. And, they, you know, it's just basically because I didn't know what was going on. It just scared me to death. I bet. It scared me to pieces. My poor parents, you know, it's like, oh, honey, it was the heater. No, Mom, it's not the heater. I know what the heater sounds like, all of that. You know, and, and you know, you, you know, night terrors and the entities coming and, oh, my God, it was just a real travail. And now, so, now uh, the, huh? Well, I was going to, well, okay, I was going to lead in with, and then how did you, it's interesting. So you have that and you think, as a child, you're going, oh, my goodness, I'm, Kind of a, kind of a different child. I didn't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't but, tell anyone. I wouldn't tell anyone about it. 
No, I no. But I mean, you're in. This is you and your your internal. You know, you got your internal thought process. But then, but how did you make the connection and discover why you were the way you were and get into the work of Kundalini? How, I'm interested in how that ha- came about. Well, the, the Kundalini went dormant when I turned 13, and it stayed dormant until, oh gosh, the age of about 24. But even so, I just thought it was my weird psychic skills coming back at the age of 24, and I was wasn't quite sure I wanted to go there again because it was so scary. Uh, but after that, after they did come back, I decided to just embrace them. And the, the kundalini skills themselves led me to the first kundalini awakening of my current body. Mm. Okay, So no longer was I running on the, the kundalini that I came in with. Now, that this, this corporeal form, was activated and in an awakening process. Okay. And how did you feel? How did you feel at the time? Uh, oh, yeah. I, well, I still didn't know. I still didn't know what it was. Yeah, I mean that yeah. must have been startling. It's a, it's, it's, it's what the the Sanskriti people call that self-realization. Except I didn't feel I had a heck of a lot of choice in the matter, but it did happen, and and it. It definitely felt like I had a writhing snake for a spine for quite some time. And, uh, yeah. you know, it was, it's definitely a difficult experience. And I can understand from an authentic, uh, perceptive point why people would go crazy or why people would self admit. But you have to remember that, uh, I had medical experience by the time that I came into this, uh, uh, First awakening, second awakening, but first for this body. You know, I already knew what my intake would be. Okay, I already knew what a subjective, uh, objective assessment, prognosis pattern would be for for any kind of an intake of a medical DX, and uh, I certainly wasn't going to go there. Okay, so I knew, right. I knew what not to do, and uh, and so I just struggled with it for a long, long, long time, for years, and it. Uh, you know, I was homeless, I was on the street, not because I was addicted to drugs or had an alcohol problem or anything like that. I had Kundalini, and I was just trying to figure out how to make my way in a world with such expansion to it. And I, you know, the the, the spinal sweep and the oneness it was wonderful, wonderful stuff, And but I still didn't know what it was. I still didn't have any kind of a word for it. I just thought, wow, boy, you know, I'm a pretty strange fellow <laughs> and uh and so i lived i lived uh very hermit like within our society and i i would uh i would suggest that everybody who sees a homeless person don't think for one second that they may not be that kundalini awakened master just trying to come to grips with what's going on not everybody out there that's unshaven and unkempt is is Strung out on on a, on a drug or addiction of some sort. Some people are just trying to find their way, right? And understand. Well, so this I mean, happened. This well, this occurred for about twelve years, and okay. uh, after that, you know, I uh, I read a book by Gopi Krishna that was called Kundalini: The Evolutionary Energy in Man, and then I knew what I had. Ah. Uh, then and then everything fell into place. Everything fell into place because what he had, you know, he had a real hard time with it too. And uh, he, he, uh, you know, he operated from a fear basis, which I did much of the time as well. And when you go into a fear, you go into resistance. And when you go into resistance with Kundalini, you always lose. You cannot resist a divine force. No. And and so when I knew what had taken place, uh, then then I knew. Then I knew I just needed to surrender and embrace this with love and grace and 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 uh and allowing and when that happened, everything changed everything changed immediately then i then i then everything was flowing, and I felt the energy and i and I began to have the knowingness that comes through through a Kundalini awakening, and this knowingness is having information that you have no right to have. You haven't studied it. Nobody's told you it. 
you know, you haven't read it in a book, you haven't looked online with it. You know, you you know immediately. And uh this knowing this just kept coming into me and 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 and I knew that I had to go through some more refining uh, episodes and so I just I went into them and I went into them with a clear head and and uh and uh I really was able to to partake of of a of a far grander uh reality and teaching from the kundalini than I would have if I had been uh you know still enmeshed in the in the kundalini syndrome aspects of it everything that I had to go through I had to go through in order to become a teacher I made almost every mistake a person can make when it comes to the kundalini. Seriously, um, I tried to I tried to get rid of it. I tried to, you know, get myself exercised or have a shaman. But, work. You know, nobody knew. Nobody could do it. But and, that's you uh, know. The, it, it, well, sometimes it's it's, it's the, the unpleasant experiences that are the best teacher, because you know now what, especially when you're working with people that actually, are in your workshops, what yeah. you know what they're going through. You well, the thing empathy. is, is I had to know. I had to know from an authentic standpoint before mm-hmm. I could teach from an authentic standpoint. Absolutely. Okay. It wasn't taught here. And, and before. basically, Kundalini was just setting me up to do what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. I was in a. I was in the Kundalini University. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet. And, and if you don't know what's going on, it's a scary place. Now. Um, yeah, so so it never stops, Duncan. It keeps going. It keeps. I don't believe anybody that says, "Oh yeah, I did Kundalini last summer. It was really cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they did. I don't know what they did, but it wasn't Kundalini. <laughs> because yeah. the first thing of the deal is, you don't do Kundalini. Kundalini does you. Yeah, it, it does you, and it does you with force. And it's not always unpleasant. It doesn't slam you into the walls. I mean, it does sometimes, but it doesn't. You know, it's it's more of a gentle, loving, nurturing, balancing, harmonizing force than than something that is you know really difficult. I mean, if it's training you to be a teacher, then yeah, you know, put your seatbelts on. Um, but. It has qualities that are absolutely fearsome. And uh, in the in the Kundalini terminologies, one of those qualities is called Kali, K A L I. And uh she is a, it's a feminine uh god, goddess. And uh she she's quite fearsome and uh you know you when you have Kundalini, you learn to discern and you learn to make judgments that are not based on any kind of fear or or anger. And so you never really have to unleash Kali on anybody. And if you do see that happening, then there's there's another reason behind any kind of a of a of a say an emotional vibe behind it. Uh she also comes to people as a tiger. This is real. This is a real manifestation that that isn't of a divine quality, and yet it is. The Kundalini will come to people in top of the food chain, uh, shamanic animals. We're talking about wolves, tigers, lions, uh, bears, uh, spiders, uh, eagles. You know, I mean, a phoenix, the phoenix bird comes. Are you there? Hello? All right. Yep, I'm, I'm listening. And uh, and as she comes to people within those formats, uh, very specific teachings are being given. You are to pay attention to those teachings. For those of you who are who are listening now and in the future, uh, you pay attention to what the animal is telling you or communicating to you. Uh, no longer are your dreams simply places to escape from the physical reality. With Kundalini, your dreams are another classroom, and you need to treat it that way. Okay. Every every religion, every every belief system, every shamanic practice, it all leads to the Kundalini. 
Kundalini is is one of the points on the compass that is a uh, where all the, all the roads lead to Kundalini, Kundalini so to speak. Uh, in some of the tribes of the Amazon basin, you can't even become a, a a healer or a or a medicine person in those communities if you haven't gone to the Kundalini, which is of course why they like ayahuasca so much because ayahuasca can can introduce you to the Kundalini that way. Right. And one thing I just wanted to just just stop for a moment and just get some identification because we have been. It looks like in the chat room we've been having people tuning in. Um, just let people know that you are listening to live at the Healing Loft, and uh, this comes live from the Healing Loft in Northeast Minneapolis. We are a holistic wellness center, and we serve the Twin Cities. We serve the Upper Midwest, and we have a number of events here, and we have another practitioners that operate out of here and we're all about at wellness and wellness at all levels spirit we're, we're really talking about you know we're talking about spiritual awakenings but we're talking about the physical we're talking about the emotional and um talking and our website is www.thehealingloftmpls.com and you can also reach us at our office here at 612-208-1408 um I'm going to give a different number for the radio show if people want to call in. We still have some time. It's 347-838-8539. And um, we also are on Facebook on, at The Healing Loft. And you're also on Facebook at Kundalini Seminars. And so I suggest if you are a Facebooker, like that page um, because you're going to keep that updated with some of the things that you're doing. And for people that are listening in the Twin Cities area, we are going to be having a film uh, that Master Chrism is actually in that we're talking with him. And that's going to be Thursday night here at the Healing Loft at 7 o'clock. Um, so one of the things I'm going to talk to you is about the film. And you are actually going to be here in person in September, uh, the 17th and 18th. Uh, and you're going to be at the Springbrook Nature Center uh, and that's 185th Avenue Northwest in Fridley, uh, Minnesota. And um, to find out information on how to sign up for that, uh, contact Eileen Laurel. And she's kind of your uh, Twin Cities liaison. And she can be reached at E-L-O-R-O-5-5 at yahoo.com. Or you can reach her at 239-246-246. 5608. That's 239 246 5608. She can give you more information about uh, this workshop coming up and how to sign up for that. Um, I wanted to get a chance to talk about uh, the film because this is this will be, you know, people are really fascinated and kind of gripping listening to you um, talking on the show here. Uh, you were actually in a film um, called Kundalini. Um, maybe tell, talk about your participation in that. How did that, that project come all about? Uh, I had an association with the director producer of the film and and uh we were discussing uh different ways that the Kundalini wanted to express itself into the western media format and uh the idea of a film was born in that conversation and uh but it you know it needed to be a film that was for the you know for people that just needed a very basic, basic understanding of what it is and what it can do and, and uh, you know, the different uh, perspectives from different people that have and don't have. Uh, some people in the film don't have the Kundalini. They just, but, you know, they have their own ideas about it, and, and some people in the film do, do have it, and they, you know, they have their ideas about it. I'm just one of a, uh, among, I think, about five. Okay. People. Uh, he filmed it. My participation occurred at a seminar that I was giving in in Arizona, and okay. um, uh, it's it's I think it's very good for a, a broad based spectrum of opinion about the Kundalini. Okay, so you're getting different perspectives. So you, but I think that's good. You know, people and. Can examine, people need you know, that. A lot of the a lot of the people that that, that uh, the the director interviews, you know, they have PhDs, and so 
for the people who like the, the PhDs, you know, then then they get to have that PhD perspective, and then right. uh, um, people like myself and and the lady, the the woman who's in it, you know, they, they have the actual energy themselves, and you can kind of get an idea of uh, what it is is to have it, to have it, and to hold it. Okay, and so you kind of you get both. You get both the scientific, and you get the the uh, you know the people that that have it, and you get to kind of you get the whole pattern of information i think that that's available to us at this point uh you know within within a, a parameter that the western audiences i think can can understand and appreciate okay well, and you know i think that's a good idea because you you get to reach when you, I, I like that 360 approach. You get a little bit of everything, and you also well, yeah, you, yeah. You know, I mean, talk about resonating. You know, people, resonating, you know, with some people, some. I have to tell you, people are going to resonate that, with that, others. Yeah. You know, the the narrative, the the voiceover woman that speaks, you know, th- those those are based on the writings that that have that I have written. Um, but I like people being given more than just one person giving their idea about the kundalini. I think it's necessary for people to hear it from more than one source. And, uh, and it, you know, so that, you know, it's one person isn't right about anything. Okay? Well, one I, well, person has one agree. person's opinion. And, I, you know, and I do like the idea that you're bringing in people that give a scientific because it lends the validity to, you know, I, I, I'm well, sure you you struggle with that. I struggle with that when you know working with people. I, I do shocker healing work, and it's like, well, you know, um, need, need, if everybody's looking for scientific proof. You know, I you know what 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 are you doing with me? What, do you, what how, how does this work? You know, and I love. Well, let me, I, let, I mean, let me let me let me back up a little bit. I mean, sure. science is nowhere near coming into a a, a recognition of Kundalini. Nowhere even close. Come on, the Masons won't even let it out in the United, you know, in the, in the Western society. So, and, you know, and, and the, Mason, the Masons and the Masonic, you know, they have a, a very interesting relationship with science and what we are allowed mm-hmm. to know and to understand. And so science is not there yet. They don't recognize spirit. They don't recognize divine qualities. They don't recognize not, the I, Well, and, and I would say most, but there are a few. There are a few scientists that okay. are out there. They're champions I, for no, it, and that's right, what I'm saying. If you right, get I, more and more people, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to make a blanket statement. But you can't prove it. There's no instrumentation out there that that is being uh, let out into the public that can measure a kundalini uh, response in a, in a human being. And so, with with that being given, what you know, when I say from a scientific basis, I have to to give a little. You know, I have to give that caveat. Right. That science, Absolutely. as of yet, cannot prove it, weigh it, understand it, replicate it at will. Therefore, since it doesn't uh, measure up within those narrow parameters of expression, to a right. scientist, it does not exist. Well, it, which is where we have the, the problem with method. the MDs. You know, the MDs, since since it doesn't exist within science, then you know they can't really DX. Oh, you've got Kundalini syndrome, right? Well, I mean, we're not there yet, but I'm just saying that it's encouraging that people are getting on board, at least, you know, acknowledging it. Acknowledgement is huge. And then, it's and huge. Being it's huge. Absolutely. It, 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 so I'm saying there is, a, there is a shift going on where there is, um, and when you mentioned that, I was like, well, that's, that's heartening to hear, you know, that there, there is some people that are at least giving, lending some support to it. Um, well, here's uh, Duncan. I'd, I'd, I'd like to say something uh, out of the blue here. I'm, I'm being given to say. Absolutely, this go ahead. Jump in. To, Jump your, in. to your people, do not initiate an activation through drugs, uh, recreational or otherwise. Do not run to South America and take as much ayahuasca as you can in order to have Kundalini. It's a big mistake. Kundalini is not something that you want to force. Upon yourself, no. it can really, really, really hurt. My my experience, as hard as it was, would would you know it would be nothing compared to what a person can have when they try to storm the gates of heaven. You do not 
want to do that. If you do want to initiate Kundalini protocol into your life, do it very slowly. Um, yeah. If you if you like, what, and, and don't don't feel like you can be lazy about it. Don't think you can take a shortcut. Uh, go do the safeties. They're free. Okay. You don't have to pay a dime. Just go to the website Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com. Go to the safeties, and do that once a day, once a day, and that will that will go to great lengths of, of giving you a refinement protocol to awaken your Kundalini in a safe and sane way. Do not use the entheogens because they're fun and they give you a high. That's fine if you're just doing it for fun and 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 and, and, and you know you want to have a high. Right. But don't do it for kundalini. And absolutely do not do mushrooms, psilocybin, and then ask for kundalini because that that can be some of the that's that's one of the worst experiences I've ever seen a person have. Well, I would and I, they don't I recover. would be they don't recover. I would be be frank with you. What you described what happens during a kundalini awakening. I can I mean it's scary enough, you know, well I I I don't advocate the use of drugs anyway. But doing both at the same time sounds absolutely terrifying. It's horrible because you never come back from... What happens is the person shatters their own reality, but without the refinement strength. You see, every time you refine yourself in a certain way, you gain strength, you gain stability, you gain balance. But if you go straight from zero to a thousand, you know, in one night... You have no strengths. You have no refinement strengths with you, but you do have an extremely shattered reality where you know you. Um, it, it, let's just say it's a very big aquarium, and uh, you, you know you don't want to be the one on the, you don't want to be the worm on the hook, so to speak. Well, and speaking of, this is a good lead-in question. We had a question from the chat room, um, from Camelia. She asks, um, could master Prism, say a bit more about what the safeties are. We, we talked about it a little okay, bit earlier, yeah. and I'm not sure when she jumped in. Well, the safeties are a whole set of protocols. This is Camilla. Camilla, hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the safeties are a protocol, and what they do is, is it, well, here's what happened. I was giving a seminar in Santa Cruz, and I believe it was around 2006. And uh, at the time, I had not, I didn't have safeties. I was just following my my intuition and, and the Kundalini guidance on what I needed to do for specific individuals to activate the Kundalini with them in a way that they could have and hold it without damaging them. So, you know, I, I gave the activation to one gentle, gentleman and, and uh, you know, the next day he came back to the second day of the seminar and he pulled his shirt up and you could see red uh, welts going up his spine over each of the chakras. And I thought, oh, no. I was horrified, but I didn't show it. I just said, oh, how do you feel? He says, oh, I feel great. You know, and, and he says, they're fading. And I said, oh, good, good, good. You know, and I went on with the seminar. You know, I stayed, paid some special attention to him to make sure everything was okay psychologically and emotionally with him. Right. But, uh, that night I went into a meditation and I, I, you know, I basically put it out there. I didn't want to give another Shakti pot until I had safety protocols. And that's when they came. And if you look at the safety protocols, you will see that they come from almost every tradition that I mentioned. And this is the Kundalini writing this. The Kundalini will... will it's not like medium mystic or channeling so much because it's an inner to it's it's an inner thing that's part of you already. It's part of you from birth, and so it just takes your hands and it starts typing on the keyboard. This is that goes right through it, and uh, all the mudras uh, that that came from the Sanskriti people and the uh, you know the different breathing technologies such as pranayama and the and the the Tibetan rites from the Tibetan people and all of these different uh, scenarios that are within the safeties came from the Kundalini itself and have proven their worth over the years as hundreds and hundreds of people have been doing this. Uh, I don't say thousands and millions because it just hasn't been that, but 
Hundreds of people have been doing this. And uh, they're coming into it. It's especially helpful to people who have Kundalini and have been having a terrible time with it. And they come into the safeties and, ooh, all of a sudden they can find balance. They can find harmony. Mm. Okay, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, uh, I basically, you know, without getting into each specific uh, sure. uh, protocol, there's there's a whole list of protocols. Uh, some of the ones that I wanted, I would like to mention, would be the actions of forgiveness in all aspects of your life. You must be willing to forgive. If you are not willing to forgive, you're gonna you're gonna have, and the Kundalini comes up. You're going to feel like you're having a heart attack. I got gotcha. you. And the kundalini will smooth, oh my gosh, it'll smooth out so beautifully within the actions and grace of forgiveness. You must be willing to forgive anyone and everyone who has ever harmed you in your entire life, as far back as you can remember. I tell people to do the recapitulation where they... They write out, okay, Johnny Smith hit me when I was five, and I hit him back, and I forgive him. And I forgive myself for hitting him back, too. You always have to remember to forgive yourself. It's not right. just a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Yeah. And you forgive your parents. You forgive perfect strangers. You, you forgive everyone in your life. And you do it continuously because one time does not typically do it. You need to do it over a period of time, continuously. So this is why they're, they're in the safeties. And the same thing with, with gratitude. Show gratitude for even having a life on this planet, for your lungs working in, in connection with your heart, which pumps blood to every part of your body, to all the cellular communities that make up the, the body that you are and their, and their frequencies and, and, and their agreements and the love that is, that is what you are composed of. Love is the strongest thing. Absolutely. It's what holds our bodies together. So absolutely. You know, so you, you that, well, yeah. You're, you're kicking yourself into high gear. Um, you know, you a lot of the things that you're mentioning. You know, and you know, putting yourself in the grateful. It's putting you, kind of preparing yourself for going that elevation level. Because that's right. Yeah, that's a refinement. These are all refinements. It, and one of the things that's, yeah, I really, you know, we got to get into the meat of, because you are coming to Minneapolis and doing a seminar, what can people, this is, again, I'm going to put out, you're going to be uh, actually live here in Minneapolis, September 17th and 18th, doing a seminar at the Springbrook Nature Center uh, in Fridley, uh, Minnesota. It's 185th Avenue Northwest. And to find out more about that, you have a Twin Cities Liaison um, Eileen Laurel, and she, and she can email her at e l o r o five five at yahoo dot com. You can also reach Eileen by phone at two three nine two four six five six zero eight. But what 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 do you do at your workshop? What what can people expect if they attend? A lot of information. Bring a notepad. Bring something to record it on. Preferably a notepad, because as you write, so do you record with your with your brain. Uh, there is that uh, there is that activity that we've been trained here in the West since we were kids to write down something. You can remember it a lot better. And so I I, I suggest people bring a pen and a, and a notepad to really get these this information down. Because I go through all of the safeties. I go I answer any and all questions that are that are given to me regarding the Kundalini and the cares and concerns that people have about it. Uh, the skills, the graces that come with it. Uh, and I should say that there are definite powers that come with the Kundalini, but they are not to be sought. And I know that sounds like a real tease. And it isn't a tease, it's a test. You are tested. You are not given great, great power until you are able to prove yourself responsible to wield it. Okay. If you're going to get a great power such as what the Kundalini brings to a person, then you know you're going to have to prove yourself capable of of being trustworthy and responsible in how you wield that power. The great sages will say, "Don't even go for it. Just 
go with surrendering completely to the Kundalini. And I, I echo that. I echo that. Surrender completely to the Kundalini, and the gifts that come will be those gifts that you need to have. And it's really interesting. Uh, earlier in the program, I was actually thinking that I, you know, the old uh, the Spider-Man thing. You know, the with great power comes great responsibility. And I was like, and I, exactly. It's interesting. You just said that. Just said that in so many words just now. So. But and it's and it's very true, especially with Kundalini, because with Kundalini we're not dealing with a cartoon comic hero. So yeah. We're dealing with a real uh, situation on a human being. Now, now I, I want to just to, if if I may, Duncan, I want to get into some of the more healing aspects. I know I drifted away from that a little bit. Uh, no, no, please. Uh, when you have Kundalini awakened within you, your radiance alone can initiate healing on people. I the Kundalini will call me off the freeway, and what I mean is it'll it'll all of a sudden it'll wrap itself into my heart and just. I, you know, I, I know I have to go to the trauma center in my area. So I'll come off the freeway, and amazingly, parking will just open up for me, which is amazing in and of itself. I get out of the car, and I go straight into the chapel area or the meditation area. And there, you know, I, I sit down, and I'm able to, the radiance just fills up the entire hospital. And... Um, Sometimes I'm even able to see who it is I'm helping, because I typically don't even look. I just want I want to give it to everyone, and uh, for those that need it, they can have it, whether it be a doctor or a nurse or a janitor or somebody just visiting. Uh, in this case, it was a gentleman whose uh, wife and, uh, and two kids were in a severe automobile accident, and and he was praying to God. For, for assistance, and that is who Kundalini is. Getting in touch with the divine. Getting become yes, yeah. well, the getting divine in touch, you being, being part of it, <laughs> being part of the divine. You know, or reminding so, so, yourself you are part. Of, you are divine. Right. That's really you are the, the more divine. active. Yes, you are the you are you are the flesh made divine. Okay, but it doesn't turn you into a Jesus automatically. I mean, no. you have to go through, you know, your testing. You have to go through your refinement. You have to you have to prove yourself. You have to walk in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay? You have to be willing to help people whether they pay you for it or not. Okay? I mean, you know, these 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 are very very important issues. And so so with the Kundalini, your radiance pours levels of love and divine qualities onto a person that you don't even know, and you don't even need to know them. <laughs> All you need to know... Hang on, let me get a drink of water here. Oh, sure. It's a long interview. You didn't... Yeah. A lot of information. <laughs> All you need to know is that that energy wants to be given, and you know it. You No uncertain right. terms. It comes out of you. So so that's just one of the mechanisms of healing that comes through the Kundalini. Another mechanism is, for me at least, I can make dermal, uh, I don't make it, but for me, dermal levels, the dermal uh, levels of a person's body disappear in certain areas. So I just look at a person and all of a sudden the skin will just fade away and I can see what process is, is working within them that, that needs to have some some balance or harmony restored. Have you, have you oh, ever yeah. had a... I, in one experience, I was just thinking of a very interesting question. We are talking about the power and responsibility. Have you, has anyone ever approached you and said, help me activate my, you know, kundalini, and you just looked them over and said, just shook your head and said, you're not ready for it yet. Oh yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Because you're probably, yeah, I would okay. say that you'd have some people say, they think it's like kind of what we're saying, like, oh, this is really cool. I want to check this out, and it's like kind of going in for the wrong reasons. 
first of all, most of those people won't be able to do the safeties. They won't be able to follow the protocols because they're in it for reasons that are not, as you say, appropriate to the process. So, you know, in in most, if not all cases, I am able to uh, to be confident that that is that is what is occurring. I don't I don't need to to worry too much about whether a person is appropriate for this or not because the Kundalini will make that discern discernment. Gotcha. It will. Okay. You know, it will go into that person and go, oh, okay. I see Tom Tommy Johnson here. You know, he just wants to be Spider Man. He doesn't really, uh, yeah. You know, he, he's in it more for his ego self. And let's 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 be very clear for the people listening: is your ego self is a very important self, and it's what's helped you to survive up to this point on this planet. With Kundalini, you have to change from an ego responsive self to a divine responsive self, and that means quieting the ego down. Now, the ancients would say, oh. Annihilate the ego. Kill the ego. And I just don't see it that way. No, I don't you need see to train, it. Yeah, you train the ego like you're you're training a, a, an eight-year-old kid. Say, look, here's some kid here. You just have to look. Let me, I'll give you here's some crayons. Go over there. Draw a nice picture. Let me look at it later on, and I'm going to do some work over here. Okay? So you, you just retrain the ego in a way that allows it to be part of the process, and yet not the controller of the process. Your ego does not get to control the process. Well, I always, your, I've always had the firm belief that you use your ego. Um, it, 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 it serves you, but you shouldn't serve your ego. Right. That's fine. People that's, always say, you know, let's go would, become egoless. I would agree with that. I would agree I with just, that. And I'm like, uh, no, egoless is being a doormat, and that's not quite what spirit had in mind when you put you here. Right. Right. No, I so so so, you know, from an egotistical standpoint, we do not go for self-aggrandizement, and I know not everyone knows what that word means, but uh, you don't you don't live your life through the conscious uh validation of your uh self-worth. Uh you don't blow your own horn, you don't brag about mm. yourself. You don't do these things with the kundalini Okay. Uh these are parts of the of the process that are that are really crucial to a person understanding and having the kundalini that they don't go there. Now, in most cases people will have to experience mistakes in order to learn. They can listen to Master Christmas until they you know, till the cows come home, but until they make that mistake and feel the effect of that mistake, they won't truly know. They won't truly understand until they have the authentic experience. But it's you know you can you can you can hear it from me, and if you can have and hold that, then it will it may save you some pain. But if you can't, then well, the pain is always there. Pain is an excellent teacher. Um, we've got about seven minutes. I want to get in one more question from the chat room. Um, yeah, the the question was, um, is it? it Let's see. Oops, I just put it back. Where did it go? Oh, there it goes. Is this safe for beginners and spiritual things? Someone that's kind of beginning their journey, um, but maybe they're in a in a right. Well, it could be in the right place for it. I mean, is this safe? Yeah, for no. This if you out? follow the safety protocols, and you're and you're willing to to refine yourself. This is a great place to start. This is this is actually one of the best places you could you could ever start at. Uh, you to refine yourself towards enlightenment is one of the one of the most amazing experiences that a life can hold and uh to start to to work with the kundalini right now even though you may not have a lot of experience in metaphysics or anything of that nature it doesn't really re- that doesn't matter you don't need to have that all you have to to have really is an honest uh and 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 a an honest, trusting, resourceful, integrity-based mindset. If you can, if if you are a trustworthy person, then this is the path for you. If you are a loving person, then this is the path for you. If you are a person that is prone towards being afraid of everything, then this is not the path for you. If you are a person that gets angry and wants to just hurt people and 
this is not the path for you. Okay, if if you're a person that that is that sees the creative force of the divine in everything, if you are a person that that holds uh, all life and all creation and all races and all species and and you know, in high esteem, then this is the path for you. Uh, if, if you're a person that's all about money, then this is not the path for you because money, even though in the West, you know, we need the money and I charge for for right for the seminars to cover the need. rentals and things of that nature. Yeah. But I don't charge for the information. They can go to my website and they can just have it for nothing. Oh, yeah. And good, just, just for the actor, I read it. I want to get to your website on it, and I don't believe I have, so I'm going to be real careful about this. It's www.kundaliniawakeningsystems, with the number one, dot com. Perfect. So uh, for people that are because we're getting a lot of people listening, and I know we're going to have a lot of people listening in the archives, um, and they're probably going to want to look this information up. Again, it's www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. And again, I want to put out for those of you who – live in the Twin Cities or reasonably close driving distance, um, uh, this Thursday at the Healing Loft, we are going to be showing the movie Kundalini, um, which Master Chrism is one of uh, five people that are giving their viewpoints. Uh, you get to see a little bit uh, with, you, with you in action, doing, uh, uh, conducting a workshop. Uh, and that's at 7 o'clock, and that's here at the Healing Loft, which is at 2112 Broadway Street Northeast. We're in Suite 230-250 in Northeast Minneapolis. And if you're not able to make this Thursday, I also want to point out that they will be showing the movie again um, Saturday, July 16th at Magus Books, which is over by the University of Minnesota at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's at 1309.5 Southeast 4th Street uh, in Minneapolis. And um, again, you are going to be Actually, you in the flash are going to be here in the Twin Cities, um, September 17th and 18th. Information on any of these things, you can work with your liaison, which is Eileen Laurel, and there she's at E-L-O-R-O-5-5 at yahoo.com, or she can be reached at 239-246-5608, because we want people to definitely get to this information. If they're interested in, in attending your seminar that you're doing here in the Twin Cities, we want them uh, here. And, um, uh, and I'd like to say a, a little bit about how I come across to people. I, I come from a very clear kundalini uh, uh, expression. I don't need to wear orange robes. I don't need to, <laughs> to quote from a lineage. I don't need to be of a certain belief system because I know kundalini is the sum total of all belief systems. Um, I don't uh, force the kundalini within me to, to to restrain itself or to confine itself into one belief system. So I, it doesn't matter if a person is a Christian or a Buddhist or a Hindu or a shaman or any any of the belief systems, Taoist, uh, Confucianism, you know, Zoroastrianism. Doesn't matter. What matters is their level of integrity and love. Uh, of the divine within themselves as it expresses through themselves. Kundalini could care less what color of a robe that you wear. Uh, if, if she had her way, and this is the feminine aspect of the Kundalini, the Shakti, if she had her way, you wouldn't wear any clothes. But Absolutely. we do wear clothes at the seminar. <laughs> cool. well, um, well, we are down to about a minute and a half here. Uh, Master Chrism, thank you so so much for being on this evening. Uh, really uh, appreciate this. Um, and uh, for though, you know, again, we gave the information out if people want to find more about Kundalini. Uh, this is live at the Healing Loft, uh, and we're out of the Healing Loft here in Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, we are on at seven o'clock Central every Monday night. Uh, to find out more what's going on at the Healing Loft, it, our website again is www.thehealingloftmpls.com, or you can reach us here by phone at 612-208-1408. And we're looking forward to seeing you September come out to the Midwest. 
Thank you, Duncan Metzger, and everyone associated with the Healing Loft. Thank you, Eileen Loro, for uh, making yeah, these arrangements. Wonderful, uh, Duncan. Uh, you're a great interviewer, and I've really enjoyed the time I've spent with you. Thank you so much, sir. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on. So, um, I want to also thank our listeners who um, joined us today. And I want to thank some of the people in the chat room for posing some great questions uh, tonight. So um, I wish everyone well, and I hope everyone has a great evening. Good night, everyone. Join us again next time for Live at the Loft. And to find out more about your host, Check out their website at www.thehealingloftmpls.com.